Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to start talking a little bit about digital logic circuits. I've designed us a little learning board here, which we're going to go over. And uh, stay tuned at the end of the video if you're interested. Do you remember that uh, tube amp that we built based on the Fender Custom Deluxe, the 5E3 circuit? We started that in like May of 2020. Well, it's finally finished in a cabinet and we'll do a little test of it. If you're interested, that'll be at the end of this video. Now let's talk about these. Today we are using Multisim to start out with to create a bistable flip-flop, which means a flip-flop that stays in whatever position you put it in until it changes. And we will be able to determine which state our flip-flop is in by the condition of these two LEDs either one or the other will be lit. And the way we're going to do that is by attaching either the R or the S, the reset or the set, to high or positive voltage, negative voltage, or ground. We're using an op amp here, a 741 say, and we have the positive voltage attached to plus 5 volts, the negative voltage attached to negative 5 volts. We have 4.7K current limiting resistors here. We also have some current limiting resistors here. And you can see it's set up as a non-inverting amplifier. That's the op amp portion. So, <coughs> excuse me, if we take R and put it to our positive voltage, and we take S and we send that to ground we'll start the sim and you see we have our red LED is lit now if we take R and put it to the negative voltage and start the sim. Our green LED is lit. And we can develop an entire truth table, which I have done on our little PCB. So let's go over and take a look at that. All right, as you can see here, I've taken the same circuit. There's our LM741. We have our V positive going to plus five volts. We have our V negative going to negative five volts. And we have our ground. And then over here, you can see we have our inputs, R and S, and where they go. We also have um, an input here for the voltage. So if we take that and turn it into a PCB, we get something that looks a little bit like this. And there's our 3D view. And you can see we have our truth table here for R, S, and then 1 and 2. 1 is our red, 2 is our green. You can see we have ground V plus, ground V minus, V plus ground, V minus ground. Never do we have V plus and V minus. And there's our board. And this video is sponsored by PCB Way. Check them out for all of your PCB needs. You can get five boards for $5 plus shipping in as little as a week which I think is just absolutely amazing service compared to what we went through just, you know, 10 years ago, where you either made them yourself or you waited a month or two to get boards, and they cost a lot more than $5 plus shipping. Now, you can see here I did a ground plane in this. And this is going to be the first entry in my digital logic learning series. So we're going to make a bunch of these boards over the next year in 2021, 
where you can learn about digital logic, the truth tables, and how things work. And once we have enough of these put together, you'll be able to build a little 4-bit or 8-bit computer using these blocks, which you know, I think is neat. Maybe you do too. I don't know. So here are our circuit boards from PCBWay. Looking pretty good. Credit card size, I think that's a good size. And like I said, these are going to be a bunch of digital learning blocks which we can put all together with our inputs and our outputs. So, you know, if we have, say, you know, six or eight of these, you'll be able to mount them to something that's, you know, reasonable sized, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, one K resistors. Uh, two 4.7, three 4.7K resistors, one 10K resistor, two 2N2222 transistors, a red, green LED, and our 741 op amp. So I will dig out the components and we'll start building this. Okay, so we're all soldered up and everything's good. And this is where we come crashing to a halt. Went and looked through all my op amps. I've got TLO72s, LM393s. I don't even know what those are. More TLO 72s. LM 358s. TLO 71s. Not a single LM 741. So we're stuck here. I have to order some LM741s. And since this is like a couple days before Christmas, probably not going to happen until the new year. So we're going to have to end this here with our bi-stable flip-flop digital logic learning block. But thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching. If you're interested in the... Uh, guitar amp thing it's coming up next that's it i'm out peace so we started on this build back in may and i built the amplifier in a four-part series you can find a playlist for it called amp build but i could never get it to play just the way i wanted it to so i kept trying to fix it until i broke it to the point where it wouldn't work at all so i sent it off to terry at the D-Lab in Michigan and Terry worked his magic and now it sounds fantastic so I ordered the Mojo Tone uh, Fender Tweed 5E3 enclosure and a Jensen mod speaker and you can see Blake installing the speaker here getting the boys some hands-on mechanical experience 
and now we're putting the chassis back into the amp. That is the amp that I hand built and Terry <laughs> fixed. I just kept trying to get it to sound right. I was adding like negative feedback and all this stuff, trying to get it. It, it was distorting and it was oscillating. So Terry took it back to stock fender and the thing sounds absolutely gorgeous now. So Blake's mounting the uh, the amp chassis into the cabinet and that is about it. Now we're buttoning it all up putting on the uh, top and the bottoms. She's nice She's a little bit heavy, maybe around 20 some pounds, but uh, I like it and it sounds pretty good.